Hey YouTube, welcome to another one of Leroy's Auctions uh, YouTube videos. Uh, we're, this is the, the first really full installment of what we're going to start calling Collecting 101. So this is Collecting 101 Episode 2. And I'm uh, just going to talk about some collecting aspects today. And, and one of the things we're going to share and talk about is um, what we'll call athlete or player collecting. Um, this is something that, because there's so much product out there, it's sometimes kind of hard to uh, collect everything out there, you know, you know, make all the sets and all this. So a lot of folks have just gone to, you know, collecting a favorite player. And I'm just going to share uh, some things from both mine and Leroy's collection today. Um, some things that maybe you guys might find neat, maybe not. Hopefully we'll talk about some stuff. But for me, uh, player collecting started back actually in the 70s uh, for me. Uh, I've been collecting since 1977, and soon thereafter, uh, I, I really started following the Pittsburgh Pirates. And my favorite player by far was a guy named Willie Stargell. Willie, of course, is, uh, was a 1988 inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And, um, again, just my favorite player of all time. So, what started, every time I got a, a Willie, I would sit there and put that in my collection. So... Anyway, how I normally display my collection is I, I use three three ring binders. I always like to get the ones that have got the the sleeves like this, so I can put something in front of the album. Like here, like in this case, is a picture of Willie Sturgill and Kent Tacovey, who was with the Pirates at the time. On the back side, I even have uh, the Donruss Diamond King um, puzzle that they did. But for me, again, anything that's related to Sturgill. I would I'll put in here for whether it be the Topps talking card they did. Uh, well, that's a 71, 71 or seventy. Yeah, seventy one. Top Super East Hill Pirates, uh, which is a regional set from uh, the sixties. Here's a Hostess Twinkie uh, box panel with Willie right there. The different discs that came out in the seventies, uh, whether it be Crane, and if you'll notice, while they look mostly the same on the front, you look on the back, and you got all the different kinds there. Um, you know, same thing with some of these. But, again, Willie was my favorite ball player. I mean, here's his rookie from 63. And, again, you have all the different Stargells from there, some from the 60s, and you get into the 70s. One neat little story, uh, back in 1980, when um, Kellogg's came out with their 3D cards, Willie was actually on the back of the box as a sample card, basically. And this is actually right here. This is from the back of a Kellogg's uh, Raisin Bran box. And at the time, I did not have his 1980 baseball card. Uh, so I ended up writing some of his stats on the back, which you can barely see. Uh, and, and that may not be worth anything to anybody, but it's worth something to me because it brings back those memories. You know, again, uh, here's a card that a friend of the family who's now deceased uh, got to autograph, you know, got him to autograph for me. And, you know, stickers and variations and OP cheese and, you know, do I have every Willie Stargell they've ever made? Heck no. Will I ever have them all? No way. But I enjoy collecting Willie. He's just, he, again, my favorite ball player as a kid. Um, being a big fan of the New Orleans Saints, as I have been for a long time, my favorite ball, my favorite player is Drew Brees. And so I've got an album of nothing but Drew Brees. Here's a card that I had him sign at training camp. And you know, here's some of the memorabilia cards uh, of his jersey. Some of them were like Marcus Colston, you know, but it's also got the Drew jersey. Cards even when he was in, you know, his college uniform, in his Charger uniform. If it's, if it's, you know, if it's related to Drew Brees, then I collect it. Um, another aspect of player collecting, I guess you could say, for me, was NASCAR. Big NASCAR fan, have been since I was a kid. My favorite driver of all time is Tony Stewart, uh, who just recently retired. And what I what I did when I started collecting Tony is, again, I get the three ring binders. Because he drove for Home Depot most of his career, I got orange binders. Because I thought, you know, it's the main color. Plus, it, you put the little hero cards in here that they used to give out. And again, I have one from when he was in driving in the Bush series. But what I did is I, I set it up by years. Like this one is from 97 to 99. It's got his Indy Racing League cards in it, uh, his Bush Series cards in it, including, you know, there's one of his first autographs. Great autograph, by the way. 
Um, here are cards from uh, the die cast. If it was a card, I collected it. You know, the variations. Uh, there's a fan club promo card. Um, you know, there's stuff in here that's numbered. There's stuff that's not numbered. I got cards of his crew chief, even. There's cards with, you know, sheet metal. Again, if it was related to Tony, I collected it. One of the things I've enjoyed doing with my Tony collection over the years is, um, again, each year that would come out, like this is the 2001s. Everything in here is a 2001 Tony Stewart. Um, it's, it's, again, just trying to get anything and everything I could. Again, this is cards from the Coca-Cola Racing Family. Here's something from uh, the California Highway Patrol put out some cards. Um, I actually actually had the one of um, Sears Point in there because he won the race that year. Even though he's not mentioned on the card at all, um, the fact that he won that race that year to me was important. More cards from the die cast again. Um, one thing they did this particular year that I thought was kind of cool is uh, in the high gear product they have what they call custom shop and there were nine uh, there were nine different cards with three different fronts and three different backs so for example while that has all the same front switch the back you'll see that it has different backs and and, and that you know again that was just at that point in my life I was trying to collect every single Tony card I could do I have them all no do I have a lot of them? Heck yeah. One of the neat things I did with that same year, the 2001 VIP, is they had the regular card, um, the explosive, and the laser explosives. Well, again, I like things that are kind of different. I like things that kind of connect. And so what I did is the serial number cards, they're all numbered out of 420 cards. Well, I don't know how good you're going to be able to see this, but that one's numbered 75 out of 420. That one's number 75 over out of 420. That one's never number 75 of 420. That took a lot of looking. Let me tell you what. Uh, on eBay. I, one of them I don't have. That, it's not 75, it's 72. Eh, close, but no cigar. This one's actually 77 out of 100. My point is, if I can find the other one that's 75 out of 420, if you happen to have it, by all means, hook a brother up. I'll trade you straight up. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'll trade you straight up to 72 for the 75, and I'll probably even throw in a couple other nice things for you, too. This is the triple burner. That's the trans autograph where the card is, is uh, acetate. Let me pull that out real quick so you can see you can see through it. But it's autograph. Um, again, to me, if it was Tony Stewart, I collect it. it which kind of really quickly brings up the concept of rainbows. Rainbow is a, a concept in the collecting where you have each of the variations. They call it a rainbow because usually there's a different foil involved. There's a different something like that involved. I'm going to give you a quick example from my 2003 album. Oh, i got to find it. Let's see here. All right, so we're going to use one of my favorite ones. All right, so this is the base card. Okay. This is their, I don't remember what they called these, to be honest. First gear, I think it was. And you notice it's got different colored foil. It's, it's actually got a little shinier. The next card after that is the, uh, what they call it, mile per hour. It's got a different foil even yet, and that's actually individual numbered. To even further the rainbow, boy, it's not like a Skittles commercial, don't I? Further the rainbow. Here's the sample card they did. That's the back of it. There's the front, so that's actually technically part of the rainbow. And then one of the holy grails of, of NASCAR collecting is from 2003. This was um, at the Hawaii Trade Convention they used to do. Um, this is the blue version. They call them Blue Hawaii because it's in Hawaii. And they came just like this. They came encapsulated. Uh, these, there's only something like eight of these in the world or something like this. Uh, and this is one of my favorite cars because it's got the Charlie Brown Peanuts paint scheme on it. But there's again part of the rainbow. See I have the different colors of the rainbow as it were the different variations of the same card that's what a rainbow is basically um so if you hear someone say oh you know I'm, I'm collecting a rainbow and you're not familiar with that term that's what a rainbow is a rainbow is trying to get each color of the same card um another guy who i have heavily collected is todd bodine uh i am told by several i have one of the most 
comprehensive tie bowdine collections in the world i don't know I, i'm not really worried about it if i do but again what it, what it has here is again just again all the different tie bowdines again if you if you notice here we see that whole rainbow thing going on you've got the different colors the different logos the different this like that's silver that's gold that's the these are the first day they produced those were not from first day so the point is you have all the different variations and if i'm missing a card what i do is i'll put a little piece of paper in there hey i'm missing this card i also keep lists but that way i know when i get that card that where it goes i mean here's another idea of the rainbow real quick you got the regular card the silver die cut the the red die cut the printer's proof and the autograph all of the same picture all looks like the same card but there's five that's technically five different cards last and certainly not least what i want to show is leroy's favorite album uh leroy's favorite um wwe superstar hall of famer trish stratus again similar he's got an autograph here uh made out to him leroy uh that i got from trish but but again there's oddball things like the power chip that they came out with this is a sticker that they actually had in those vending machines you see at the uh the walmart and the grocery store and then just some of the basic there's some of the flare ones here's some tops ones again do we have every card that they've ever made some of the game cards from the um what are those things called raw deal there's a foreign card uh from i don't remember where that's from to be honest some of the tops inserts autograph whatever numbered parallels you know the point is you collect what you like you collect what brings you joy you you don't have to when you're collecting for you it doesn't have to be what somebody else says is a good collection okay if you like it if you want to collect it whether it be a superstar you know like tony stewart uh the guy's gonna be a first ballot hall of famer Willie we'll Stargell, Hall of Famer. Ty Bodine will never be a Hall of Famer. But I still collect him with the same passion because he's he's one of my favorite drivers. You know, Robbie Gordon is another guy who I collect. Is he going to be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame? No. He's probably in a couple ones for some of his off-road stuff. But even if he never won a race, I still collect him. Why? Because he's one of my favorite drivers. One of my favorite athletes. You know, the same can be said for some of the wrestling, some of the some of the other sports, you know. I have cards of, um, uh, there used to be a guy who played for the Pirates back in the 80s and 90s, second baseman named Jose Lind. He's never going to be worth anything money-wise, okay. But he was one of my favorite players during that time. And so I collect him for that reason. Why? Because it, it brings me closer to that athlete as part of being a fan of that athlete for me. And, and that's what I'm saying, collect the player that you like or a couple players that you like what started off for me just collecting tony stewart i expanded that um because there were a couple other drivers i liked in a couple other series the point is you collect what you like you have fun with it and i can tell you now from personal experience when i open up a pack of cards sometimes hitting a base card of one of my favorite athletes or, or football players or wrestlers or nascar drivers I get just as much excitement about that than I do a big dollar insert, and that's the truth. So again, feel free to like, comment, uh, subscribe, of course. We're going to eventually set up the thing where you can ring the bell, apparently. Um, and of course, there'll be a link to check out Le Leroy's Legendary Auctions, because again, there may be some stuff you might need for your player collection.